entertainment now stepping forward a lot of men saying that there's a good deal of gay sex abuse underway in the world of wrestling and everybody all these years has been scared to step forward now come forward a number of people to say because i wouldn't have sex with another guy in the game i couldn't get promoted including three honestly some some <laughs> Well, listen, while you're laughing, this has been, this has been a not-so-funny issue for women. Now, we have a casting couch, essentially, alleged, in the wrestling game, and some guys are saying, I lost my job because I wouldn't do this to this uh, guy who was a, a higher, more powerful than me, on the ladder. And before you think this is trivial, first of all, let's understand that a couple of these uh, uh, charges involve kids. 14 years old, juveniles. You go to jail for a long time if you're involved with sex of any kind with a juvenile. One more point. The Wrestling Federation, you know how you tee hee ha ha, what a joke, hoo hoo. $1.7 billion in 1990. That's more revenue that has been generated by the NFL. So while you're laughing, somebody is whistling all the way to the bank. We have three people who used to be in the wrestling game who are going to tell you that they indeed encountered people who wanted sexual favors and they were professionally penalized when they said no. And if you think the WWF is hiding behind lawyers, here is the head of that organization who has accepted incidentally recently resignations from two executives who stand accused, accused of gay sexual harassment. He'll have a prepared statement. First, let's get the charges underway here. Gentlemen, Murray Hodgson, hired by Vince McMahon, here on my left for the TV job. You were the commentator. Uh, and then fired two months later. What happened? Can you specifically, and without taking us around the world, tell us what is it that happened to you? I wouldn't sleep with the vice president of operations, so they fired me. Is the... Uh, uh, is the vice president of operations one of those who resigned? Yes, he is. And do you want to name him? I don't think that'd be necessary. Um, what did you, you did you announce? Did you do any color for any telecasts? Yes. About how long did you do the color? Oh, I started for about a month. They hired me for a two-year deal, and it just went right out the window when I decided that uh, I didn't want to sleep with the vice president. Was there any touching? Was there any kind of vulgar uh, locker room? Uh, activity. We're trying to be specific here, Murray, as a court of law would oblige uh, any person to be of any gender. It was a little worse than that. He uh, blatantly threatened my job security. He didn't say sleep with me, did he? Is that the way men talk? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think this is the proper forum to be I agree with you, and I appreciate details. very much you're bringing a certain amount of decorum to this. This is a daytime television show, and we don't want to draw any dirty pictures. Uh, did it happen more than once? No. Just once? Yeah. And then how long after you said no were you dismissed? Just a couple of weeks. Barry Orton. Here's Barry O, the former professional wrestler who you think you lost your job with the WWF after refusing similarly. Actually, no, I've never actually said that. Okay, that's something that the media has come out and uh, with the stories that I've given, they have kind of turned it around to where I've said that. I've never said that. However, I had encounters with uh, two of the gentlemen that have resigned since the allegations began. And these, uh, these uh, incidents, of course, happened in 1978, which is a long time ago. However, the impact and the gravity of the situations are, are very severe. And, you know, if, if they were behaving that way then, and, yeah. if, you know, they would behave, be behaving that way now, I would expect. Uh, no laugh here. Uh, uh, you accuse an executive grabbing your crotch, legs, and chest and wouldn't stop. Yeah, well, I was in between uh, the two of them in the back seat of the car on a trip. You were in the center. Right. And you thought it to be a place where a junior guy has to sit. Pretty much, This yeah. would be early 80s? Uh, this was 1978. 78. Oh, right. So this is before the billion-dollar wrestling mania, pay TV, Hulk Hogan oh, yes, yes. era. Uh, and you had to drive. You know, you guys weren't 
weren't walking in money then. You, you, you right, know. and everyone, you know, uh, the more people in the car, the better, because everyone would split the expenses and uh, right. keep their travel. And then you, didn't you, don't you saying that you got out of the car and said, uh, not me? And uh, oh, oh, yeah, you know, went on for several minutes. I finally demanded that the car be back. First, I thought it was kind of funny that they were joking, but then it became, you know, har harassment. Right. Barry, it would be hard for a jury to feel a whole lot of sympathy for a guy of your size, you know what I mean? Uh, a, 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 uh, a helpless woman you're not. Um, how old were you when this transpired? 19 years old. Uh -huh. Probably about 35 pounds lighter. And also probably not altogether together in your head, like a lot of 19-year-olds. I don't know. Oh, I'm... absolutely not. You know, and I was trying to be accepted into, you know, into the business. Yeah. I was young, I was green. And you, you know. got the big dream ahead of you. Maybe you're going to be the big guy. And there was money if you got on the main to be car. Made, yes. Yeah. So you're following your dream, and uh, I suppose you want us to know, among other things, that uh, when a couple of guys in the game, executive types, come on to you like that, and you're 19 years old, you may, you know, you may be a little hesitant to tee them off. Of course. You know, and so I, I endured it for as long as I could until it became, uh, you know, I started feeling suffocated or, uh, you know, uh -huh. and you, I couldn't take it anymore. Uh, Tom Hankins, you're likewise a pro wrestler. You, uh, what's your story, Tom? Well, after I'm a former pro wrestler, I got out of the business about four years ago, but uh, back in 1985 in Los Angeles, California, at the University of Hilton Hotel, after the WWF had run a card at the sports arena, uh, I was sitting at a bar with... Uh, I guess, can I name these people? Sure, go With Pat Patterson, Andre the Giant, Dr. Jerry Graham, and Mike LaBelle. He was a Los Angeles promoter at the time, or a former promoter in Los Angeles. Right. And uh, we sat there drinking maybe for an hour or so. I was talking to Pat. I'd known Pat for maybe six months. I knew he was gay, but, you know, it didn't matter to me if he was gay or not. And I knew he was actually kind of running the shows in L.A. at the time. I don't believe he was in position as the booker yet. And I asked him... Let me interrupt to say that he is one of the executives who has resigned. Right. Very good, sir. And I asked him what was the chance of using me uh, to do jobs, which means you know, I was a loser. I'm not real big. I never made a lot of money in the business. I didn't really expect to go on the WWF, WWF make a lot of money. But, but I you loved, wanted to be in the game. Yeah, I loved the business. I worked, I started out, I worked for $10 a night sometimes in Tennessee, you know, just to wrestle, just to be in the business. Right. At the time, in 85, I was wrestling in Hawaii and Mexico and Southern California. So I asked Pat for, you know, if you give me a shot or at least a tryout. He said, well, you got two chances, slim and none. He goes, well, there is one way. And he wanted me to come up to the room with him and have oral sex with him. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, I'm not interested. And after that, the show, I went to the next uh, show they had at the sports arena. Went down to the dressing room where they'd always let me, you know, I, in the dressing room, friends with a lot of the other wrestlers there. And Pat had me physically thrown out after that, acted like he didn't know me. Right. What brings you forward now, gentlemen? Actually, I came forward because when Vince said Barry's charges were ridiculous, it was just... And I knew it was something that went on in the business, and anybody in this business or really knew about it knew what was going on with Patterson. Mm -hmm. So this is like an, uh, this is a feature of this culture that has been underway for a long time, and because it often involves uh, near jobless, uh, vulnerable young males who wanted to be either in the game or on the card, uh, they'd back up, and nobody wanted to blow any whistles. And I think, if I may, this also should be said. You didn't get a lot of press scrutiny. Nobody took you seriously anyway. Mainstream pre sports press today doesn't. Um, and and uh, Mushnick of the New York Post writes a piece. Uh, Phil Mushnick of the New York Post, his lead last week, the billion-dollar pro wrestling empire is about to be shaken to its foundations by a teenage boy scandal the Post has learned. All right, here's part of the story then, and uh, Mr. McMahon, sir, you are the boss. You are what we would call in my neighborhood uh, when we were growing up uh, a successful big shot. This is some operation you have. Over a billion dollars in annual revenue. You have, throughout the 80s, taken this thing that so many people snicker at. You have filled the Pontiac Superdome. With the help of Hulk Hogan and an occasional theatrical idea that included Cindy Lauper and the marriage of kind of pop music with this, uh, through the roof, through the roof, the PGA should pray for this kind, these kinds of revenue. Uh, and now, here you are being accused, Mr. McMahon, of uh, presiding over an, or an organization that looked the other way while these uh, sex harassment charges were being, uh, uh, sex har harassment activity was taking place. Sir, you wanted to say? We've never looked the other way. 
and anything. And I'm very happy to confront everyone today with whatever allegation they have. The three individuals about whom most of these allegations are hurled are no longer with the WWF. We have started an independent investigation on our own to get to the bottom of all of this. And that's why we're here today, is to get to the bottom of it. We may even learn something here today that my investigators do not know. I want to get to the bottom of it just like you gentlemen do. What would you like to say to him? Anybody? Uh, I'd like to say that it's about time because uh, up until now you've been animate, animately denying that uh, not only that this is taking place, but that, uh, and you're saying that you know, knew nothing of it. And, and I just find that really difficult to believe. Well, there's no reason. For, how do you find it difficult to believe that I knew nothing of it? Why would I condone this kind of activity and risk this alleged kind of revenue? Because, Vince, because you are the king of an empire and you have eyes and ears everywhere. And it is so common, at least the topic of conversation for three to five minutes every night in the dressing room, because a lot of the guys, they have to put up with it, and they hate it, because if they say anything, they're out of a job. I don't believe that to be the case, but there may be some of it. If that's the, the case, then let's get to the bottom of it. I'm anxious to learn, just as you are. Well, I want to hold some, I want a wholesome organization. I want an organization that everyone can be proud of. I want to get to the bottom of it, just like you do. This happened to me. I tried to call you. Know, I called the WWF offices. You were always in a meeting. They took my number, said you'd return my call. You know, you didn't want to talk to me, basically. And I'm sure at the time you didn't know who I was, didn't know what I had to say. But, you know, I tried to explain it to whoever I talked to and I called. And, you know, and they didn't want this to... was when, sir? Uh, 1985. I don't recall the telephone Has call. there been any uh, lawsuit? <laughs> Do you believe that sexual harassment exists in your workplace? I believe that there's a possibility of sexual harassment existing everywhere. And I, I asked directly want, if it was in the World Wrestling Federation. And I don't want it Federation. in my organization. I don't want it. I'd like to reiterate the question. Do you believe there is sexual harassment amongst the wrestlers or employees at the World Wrestling Federation today? There is a possibility of that. That's why I have these uh, independent investigators to come in. And who are these independent what, investigators? Fairfax Group Limited. And I would like, uh, you know, to hear what you have to say, and everyone has to say. I want to get to the bottom of it. Would you therefore believe that because of all these allegations coming forward and more and more corroborating evidence proving that there's no doubt sexual harassment is running rampant in the World Wrestling Federation, that you are definitely going to come public and do something about it? Why wouldn't I? If in fact that is the case, why wouldn't I do something about it? Why would I risk? What we have. Because you haven't done anything about it until it became public, because you thought it because was under I water. I had no knowledge of it. I made knowledge of it to you when I was fired, and you just blew it off and let me go. You I retained were fired a lawyer. Because you were not very good. You were not a very good announcer. You could not. That's the only reason why you were fired. You could not make the transition from radio to television. That is the only reason why you were fired. I would like to remind you, sir, that I have a two year contract. Two you years. You also have a clause in your contract that states, and as you know, you were hired on a trial basis. I was not hired you on a trial basis. Con you, you do you not have a contract? Mr. McMahon, I have a two-year deal with your firm. In that contract, you will note, in a clause, it states very clearly, and I have it outlined for all to see here today, that you can be fired almost at whim. If, in fact, you're not doing a good job. You did a horrible job. That's the only reason why you were fired. That's it. Maybe I should point out, first and foremost, that might be your inability to uh, pick good talent. It could you be. You had a national Granted. talent search, Vince McMahon. It could be. You advertised in Billboard magazine and across many different media sources searching for one man that could be the new face and voice of the World Wrestling Federation. You flew me in back and forth four and five different times from Detroit, and you chose over the course of one year of negotiations that I would be the man for that job. I didn't sleep with your vice president. Two weeks later, I'm fired. I also want to point out one very important fact. From your office came a letter to my landlord to verify my employment. From that letter, it, I must bring this point up. It says, Murray Hodson has a very secure job with Titan Sports and is a positive and productive employee. From your office, Matthew. just because I don't sleep with your vice president, that qualifies to blow me out of a two-year deal? I don't buy it. Great. Well, said very well, but I believe untrue. If, in fact, these allegations against Pat Patterson, whom you won't name, are true, why not pursue 
the legal course, the legal recourse. Why not pursue? We are doing that right now. You are. And you are aware that you waited six months after you were let go to bring these homosexual charges against Pat Patterson. Six months you waited. Why? September 14th. If in fact you were fired on the spot, if you were fired for incompetence, all right, why didn't you say right then, why didn't you say, hey, look, Vince, your, your vice president made a pass at me. You never told me that. No one had any knowledge. Human resources had no knowledge of that. Rene DuBose was waiting to hear your story. Why did you wait six months? You asked me for $160,000 today, otherwise you were coming on this program. I'm happy Excuse you're me? on this program. Mr. McMahon, do not try to deflect the truth here. First what are you foremost, asking for? How first, much money have you asked for? I have never asked for any amount of money from you. You have tried to buy me off to shut up so I wouldn't come forward and tell of these allegations that's running through the World Wrestling Federation. Your attorney should be consulted. My attorney on September of 1991 came forward to you with a letter directed to you telling you exactly what happened and that I was discharged wrongfully, I had a two-year contract, and that you too were well aware of the fact that there was a homosexual advance made against me. Don't tell me I waited six months. Three weeks later, I was on months. your rear end. Three six months later? weeks later. No. The only no. reason we waited a little longer was because you continued to try to negotiate to buy me out, and I wouldn't Murray, allow it. The fact of the matter is, you, if you look into this man's past, the fact of the matter, if you will look into your I don't think we should bringing up the oh, past. I guess not. The okay, issue sure. at hand All here, right. Mr. McMahon, okay. is one thing and one thing only. You addressed on Larry That's King Live Friday. It's Friday not the on only CNN. Issue. You went on and you said that I never worked for the World Bodybuilding Federation. I am on a video that is sold around worldwide. True, your my voice. Is. So you told you told the country that I didn't work for the World well, Wrestling you Federation. You say you were a freelance and you were hired. Well, of course not. Right. But you Second of all, you said you fired me. You didn't fire me. John Filippelli not only gave me the letter, but he also fired me. John felt so bad that I was being released that he allowed me to stay at his house if I wanted to and be with his family until I could find further place to live. And that's, my friend, speaks to all of the good deeds and good people throughout the World Wrestling Federation. We're talking about three people here. We're talking about three people and only three people that have these brought these allegations against. We're not talking about the 300. We're not talking about all of the wrestlers and things of that nature. Let's keep some balance here. Let me make the point that this uh, very important uh, conflict transpires at a time that uh, the all-time star of the wrestling game, Hulk Hogan, felt obliged to go on the Arsenio Hall show to say, I do not use steroids only to be followed by a number of... Uh, I don't believe you said that, Phil, if I can... Uh, well, he said I used, what, three times uh, He for, did admit to steroid usage. Uh, he, he said three times. And we have now several people stepping forward to say, listen, I sent Federal Express packages. They were picked up here and there. Uh, this is not to suggest that we know the absolute answer to this. This is re rather to call your attention to the fact that now some inquiry extends to Hulk Hogan. Why is that important? Because he's on just about every kind of child's toy you can buy. We're talking Hasbro here, some of the biggest giants in the manufacturing of toys are and the images this is he's not yet mickey mouse but one but one billion dollars worth of business how much at risk is this and how much will steroid uh, the steroid uh, controversy uh, find its way onto the front pages or the sports pages of our newspapers uh, an establishment that as we have said has largely ignored any kind of probe of the wrestling game. We'll talk with journalists who have probed it in just a moment. Meltzer. Dave, you're an editor of the Wrestling Observer, uh, which is what? The New York Times of Wrestling? Oh, I wouldn't say that, but... Uh... All right, well, you might as well if okay. I say... Um, uh, John Arezzi is a uh, talk show host of uh, uh, a wrestling program at WEVDAM. You guys will agree that the mainstream folks really haven't had a whole lot of time for any kind of probe or serious attention to wrestling. Isn't that so? 
Well, I think that that's, uh, wrestling in general has never gotten its due um, <laughs> recognition as far as um, in their, its, its popularity. As a business. As a, a very business big business. and entertainment, both positive and negative. I think that it hasn't been given, yeah. and, and maybe perhaps that's why a lot of things have happened. Okay. That, that uh, you mean over the years and, and nobody's, no whistles have been blown. Exactly. G give me your shortest speech, uh, okay. Dave. What's going on here? Wh why is this serious? I mean, I think we know, but... There is a kind of a tendency to chuckle at this. You know, the big boys are, uh, you know, are playing uh, with each other is kind of ha-ha. Um, uh, and it isn't. It it's isn't. It's not. Not at all. No. Well, tell them why. Tell them to why, there's, why this well, is important. there's so many different issues here. And the, um, as, far as, as far as, like, a, a criminal thing, I think hopefully everybody in this panel wants just the truth to come out. And I don't know what the truth is. I, you know, we all hear different versions of a story, and we just want to hear the truth. Very so good. that's fine. John, yes. what would you add to that? Same question. Well, the mainstream media pretty much has uh, ignored the entire situation. Uh, uh, they really just started jumping on it last year with uh, uh, allegations of steroid abuse in the World Wrestling Federation, and now they've really uh, come alive. Uh, and what, do you think that's what opened the door to these charges? I think, the, uh, I think what opened the door to all these charges basically was the fact that uh, last year, after the steroid trial of Saharian, uh, Vince McMahon started a steroid policy. Dr. Zaharian, Harrisburg, PA, three years steroid distribution. Right. Yeah. And uh, after that trial, uh, Mr. McMahon started a steroid policy, and during that press conference, he did not invite the wrestling media. Uh, I alerted Phil Muchnick to that, and after that... Uh, uh, that's when certain people started calling Mr. Muchnick about other allegations. Uh, you speak of the New York Post reporter. Yes. Superstar Billy Graham, I'll tell you what, he's won his share. <laughs> Former pro wrestling champ. Hey, baby. Oh, they still love you, Billy. Don't tell them I had to give you a shot before okay. the show, right in the mouth because okay. you were disobeying okay. my orders. <laughs> Former... Hey, uh, hey, what's not so funny, uh, Billy? Tell him. Uh, you, uh, you saw ring boys, did you, being sexually harassed? Yes, I, I've seen ring boys uh, being sexually harassed. What's a uh, ring boy? Uh, Pat, a ring boy is a person who's uh, usually employed to put up, uh, put up and take down a ring, travel from one town to another. Uh, age group possibly from 13 to 19 to 20 uh, fluctuates anywhere in between. And you saw what? Uh, I, I saw on one occasion, in, in, I believe it was in uh, New Haven, Connecticut, Pat Patterson actually grabbed one of these child, one of these children rather, in the crotch while putting up the ring. I witnessed, I came to the arena a little bit early, walking by the ring to the locker room, and I saw Pat Patterson with his left arm on the kid's shoulder and his right hand in his crotch. I witnessed this for myself. You also claim to have, uh, you did not see the abuse of a 12-year-old boy in the car. You mentioned this on Larry King's program. I wasn't on Larry King's program. Weren't you? Oh, I'm sorry, Barry. I'm sorry. Sorry, you weren't. Uh, Bruno was. We'll get to Bruno in a moment. Did you see? Uh, 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 you you didn't see the abuse of a 12-year-old in a car by the ring announcer, did you? I didn't see the I didn't see the actual abuse. I was there the night in Allentown, Pennsylvania, when Mel Phillips was caught in the front seat of a car with a child approximately 10 years old performing prefer, performing oral sexual yeah. Uh, yeah, perform now... on this child of 10 years old brought into the arena by a security guard confronted to Mr. McMahon, Vince Sr. and Vince Jr., and they said we would handle it. Vince Sr., your father? Is that right, Vince? Yes, and first of all... Is that I, true? No, I don't know if it's true or not. I, I can tell you that no one ever came to my what dad What was the year this me. is supposed to have taken place, Billy? About 82 or 83, I can't remember, but the, the, the main part I want to be... We should also with. make this point, Billy. These are pretty heavy bombs you're throwing These here. These are very heavy bombs. Uh, but, yeah, but we don't bomb. have any proof, and I don't think you're claiming to have seen the illegal act. Okay, I may not have seen the, the illegal, the, this particular illegal act, but, but it has gone on for so many years, just as the selling of drugs by Dr. George Zahorian has gone on for 15 years in the World Wrestling Federation, uh, witnessed and uh, condoned yeah. by Vince McMahon, you see, and, and condoned by him sitting this close to Dr. Zahorian while he sold steroids, while he sold barbiturates, downers and uppers to every yeah. wrestler who have yeah. wanted them, just you see. You I'm saying, what I'm trying to say is the man condid, could condone this, so he also condoned the homosexuality. Uh. He put up with the drug sell and he put Let up the home and such Identify out. the cast of characters here. You mentioned a Mal Phillips. He is another of the executives who has resigned. I don't believe he was an actual executive. He was a ring announcer. Was he not? Has he not resigned from the WWF? I believe he has resigned or been fired. I don't know uh, which. Uh, is, is he not one of the people who has... Uh, 
He's one of those who is uh, Stepped down, alleged, uh, yes. following the publicity about this. Yes. Nobody's been proven guilty. We should get that point. You're denying you recall anything like this, looking the other way. Not or... only that, the thing of it is, why not speak up? If, if I saw something like that, I'd call the authorities. That's what you would do. You, a 10-year-old boy, you'd you call the authorities. Come on. You're not going to let somebody like that get away with that. Please, you know why? You know why? Why, why, why didn't you? Why didn't, why didn't, you, didn't you speak up? up why didn't you speak up when you allowed when you allowed Dr. George Zahorian to sell barbiturates that kill almost killed Rick McGraw? They were in his bloodstream when he died, uh, yeah. along with all yeah. the. Uh, Billy, we're and, all and, smarter and, now and, about and, uh, steroids. And, 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 but wait a minute. Barbitin oh, yeah. steroids plus hardcore drugs that I had three overdoses with myself yeah. from Dr. Zahorian's mm. drugs. And I tell you one thing, if my wife would have had a gun, she flushed half the drugs down the toilet. And if my wife sitting right there would have had a gun, she would have killed Dr. Zahorian. And she said if she would have had a chance, she would have killed this with man yeah. because he permitted yeah. it to but, happen. Yeah, but you took him too, didn't you? I was addicted because of the accessibility. Yeah. Well, you must have been a real crank when you were on him, too, weren't you? I mean, weren't you? I mean, doesn't it affect your personality? Well, I don't want to put words in your mouth. You're, uh, you're addicted. You're uh, addicted. To, but you're also crabby and easy to anger, aren't you? Doesn't it alter behavior and emotional? And... Not, not, not if you're sedated. Not, not if you have barbiturates and you have you, facidil. Could you compete and survive and be a top card person in the 80s in the wrestling game without taking steroids? Be no, honest. no, not you. You have to take steroids to 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 to, to in this man's World Wrestling Federation to be on top to because it made you bigger. Because, you look better in the poster. And that's the and market. You, that, that's and the we'll market. We'll be back in just a moment. Please send a postcard to Donahue Tickets, care of NBC, 30 Rockefeller Plaza, New York, New York, 10112. Remember, postcards only, please. Bruno Sammartino, you did appear on the Larry King uh, Live program uh, last week. Are you impressed with Mr. McMahon's apparent uh, acknowledgement here on this program, which was not forthcoming on that one, that maybe there is a problem? Some of these poor folks out there are sitting there listening to these guys, and when he makes them, they even applaud. Poor people, you don't know this man. Let me explain something to you. I, reti I, was, I wrestled from 1959 to 81, and I retired. When I came back in 84, as a color commentator, believe you me, the world of wrestling that I left and the one that I found, it was bizarre. I mean, it was filled with drugs of all kinds. We're talking about steroids, but there was cocaine. In fact, this man who pretends like he wasn't aware, why didn't somebody come to me? One time I had to go to Arizona, to New Mexico, a different place because one of his druggies was, was, was out of it. And I well, took his place. Even I really didn't care to at that stage of my life because I had retired. I specifically said to the man, hey, if I'm going to be going to this place in the arena, says I want to make sure that I don't drive with any of you wrestlers that are full of coke and whatever. So he arranged for this other old-time wrestler, Jay Strongbow, for me to travel with him because I wouldn't be in the car because I was always afraid of a car being stopped full of drugs. And he said to me, don't worry, he says, I'll get the uh, agent to rent the car so you can go around with him. Well, let me just say this in behalf of uh, Mr. McMahon. First of all, uh, all these charges are yet to be proven. <laughs> They're just coming up. Uh, and if just, I want to get to this, uh, Bruno. Why? Well, yeah, that's another thing. Why are they just now coming up? Let's understand this. You I, I get... can answer that question. What is it? Um, there's never been a forum for them before. I mean, if you, you have to understand that the um, wrestling business has always been a totally closed entity. It's like almost like an elementary school. You don't snitch. You don't tell. If something happens in the business, yeah. there was a friend of mine, okay, and it has nothing to do with Vince McMahon. I don't want anyone to think it does. Who was murdered in a dressing room. And it was very difficult, this was in Puerto Rico, and it was very difficult for the wrestlers, even in the murder, to go to the police the next day and tell the truth. It took one of the guys, who was a friend of the guys, says, we've got to go tell the truth. And there was so much pressure right. on telling that, you know, that you don't snitch. I get it. But I, this, has to be, this point has to be made. This, these are men in groups. It sure Not is. unlike the New York Mets. That's right. Some of whose members are now under a very big, embarrassing gun oh. of a charge brought by a woman. Just let me finish here. There, I guarantee you there's nobody in this audience that's going to that's gonna drop over of indignation to discover that pot smoking may have t taken place. That throughout the 70s and 80s, especially when the money started rolling in, cocaine started to take place. No doubt about that. And I guarantee you, this bright audience knows damn well that steroids were used. This is easy to get. We know this. Okay. Now, wait a minute. Here's the question. Here's the question. Did the WWF or did the environment 
Or did people in power not only look the other way, but actually condone the loss of jobs, the loss of employment, because of bold, bold, unrestrained aggression of a sexual nature by men in power on younger men who wanted to uh, rise within the system? Absolutely That's not. the question. Can I answer that question, Phil? Sure. Uh, last night on my radio program, I had two midget wrestlers on. and uh, We don't see them anymore, do we? No, we don't. We don't see him anymore. Why. Last night on my show, a midget wrestler by the name of uh, Karate Kid alleged that in a dressing room, Pat Patterson made some sexual advances towards him. Uh, the leader of the midget group, Lord Littlebrook, uh, went to Pat... No, it's, it sounds bizarre, and it is bizarre, but it's sad. Make the uh, story, please. Running out of time. Yes, okay. Lord Littlebrook went to Pat Patterson and said, Leave this kid alone. He's not gay. He scared the little guy, you know, to tears. Uh, they were not used, but one time after that, after that sexual advance was uh, denied. denied, they were only used one more time, and the midgets right. have not been used since then. Vince McMahon, here is the owner of the World uh, Wrestling Federation, uh, and uh, he's already lost how many? Two or three executives have resigned. Two executives and one, Two executives and one announcer. Uh, one announcer, yeah. yes. Who worked right under him. What did Mr. McMahon know, and when did he know it, and is it unfair to have asked him to give these guys the heave-ho, given the complexity of these charges? Who's got the evidence? Who's going to believe who? Did he fire this and out? This is, this is, if it weren't so painful, it'd be fascinating. We've got the boss saying to the secretary who accuses him of a sexual abuse, I fired her because she couldn't type. Maybe she couldn't type. What is the truth? We'll be back to explore it further in just a moment. Uh, here are uh, just uh, some scenes from what it is that is uh, mesmerizing uh, millions of Americans, a lot of them young people. Uh, these, uh, these pros in the wrestling game will tell you, a lot of the folks... Screaming the loudest in the audience are young people, uh, males and females. Uh, D Dave, uh, your editor of the Wrestling Observer, do you see Mr. McMahon coming uh, coming forward here to uh, open the door at least to the possibility? Here, are you impressed with what he has said here in the first part of our program? It, it, it surprises me, and I'm I'm glad he said it because um. You're glad he said what? I'm glad he admitted that there was a possibility because none of us know for sure. Maybe maybe Barry does. Okay. Um, and uh, Murray and Tom, okay? I don't know for sure. It's one person's word against another. And maybe if the executives told Vince that this didn't happen, maybe they were telling the truth, and maybe they're not. I can't tell you for sure, although I will say this. I do believe Barry's story. Um, he took a polygraph, and I've spent a lot of time discussing it with him, and I think that I'm pretty decent at... Uh, talking to wrestlers and, and separating the fact from the fiction, and I believe Barry's story. Some of the... take the time to Barry, please. To Sir. ...say that the big, what the big story really was, was not, was not really the story where I sat between uh, Pat Patterson and Terry Garvin, but shortly thereafter, there was another instance, and I remember I'm 19 years old, and I drove from Amarillo to Albuquerque, New Mexico, with a single passenger being Terry Garvin, who about 40 miles outside of town started uh, proposing that he perform oral sex on me while I was driving, begging me to, let me to let him do so. And of course, because I was young, I didn't want to lose a position or a shot. And I don't have homophobia. I have no problem with, you know, I'm, I'm a First Amendment person. I believe everyone has a right to do whatever they want to do. Right. Uh, <clears throat> and, and, and I told him as nicely as I could, please don't be offended, but that's not, you know, what I'm into and, and nothing personal. And, you know, I'm still your friend, but no thanks. And he did this, uh, every 40 or 50 miles he would start again, and, he, and, and, and it got harder and harder to talk that him out happened, of it. That's horrible, but that happened. Well, let him finish his point, and your but point, Barry, is... My point is, is that uh, Dave, Dave Meltzer just said, I have taken a polygraph about all this right. stuff and, and but, came back totally clean. My point is, is that if he was attracted to young men... And, and, and younger, because I even heard the stories of the uh, kids underage back then. His behavior then, towards you makes him what makes you wonder about how he may behave toward others. Is this the point? Yeah, even and now. And you also I mean, want to know what? I mean, we, you know, you can't, you, we're not, you don't want to get the posse and the rope and the tree limb for Vince on this, something. do you? No, I don't. I, I don't want to get the posse and the rope for Vince. However, 
this has been going on in the dressing room in the WWF with, uh, and I'm talking, you know, under under uh, Title Seven of the Code on uh, um, the law, it says that any unwelcome sexual advances, touching, or anything else is sexual harassment. Right. Now we have these guys who are bookers and top executives, and believe me, I'm out of here before they are. I know I can't go and complain. I'm sorry. Now, you can say whatever you want to say, and you know that to be true. They have the power, no matter what you say, you're going to be dismissed. I'm gone, because, because oh. they are more important yes. than I am. Yeah, you wanted to say, Bruno, very briefly, with all kinds okay. of folks in this audience who haven't even had a chance, they're okay. coming after me here. McMahon, I'm going to need you in just a minute. McMahon, McMahon said, why didn't they go to the authorities? What you folks don't know is that you don't go to the authorities if you want to eat, because you're merely you're dead. You're finished, kaput, black... His father blackballed me all over the country, not for this, for some other issue. Well, okay. let's not they, bring in that. No, I won't, I won't. I'm, I'm sure just talking a... about that. There's no union, right. there's no protection for the wrestler. Very you good. speak up, you're okay. dead. Vince McMahon, here's the charge. You had to see this. Your agents, right under, your, uh, right under you on the organization chart, are accused. Two of them have resigned, including an announcer. Where were you all these years? Were, was the money so good? Was the glamour so great? Was the business exploding so wonderfully that you didn't have time to get into uh, this kind of thing and you looked the other way and allowed it to happen? That seems to be the way, uh, the way this charge is evolving against you. Well, I certainly didn't look the other way. There's no reason for me to look the other way and risk everything that we have going on. You didn't for us. know what any Barry... of this was going on, Mr. McMahon? No, I did not. What Barry is making reference to is an act some 14 years ago. 14 years ago that happened. How am I supposed to? I don't know that that happened. Yeah. This is the first time hearing of it, it on the, on the show the other day. Yeah. Do you believe it? It could very well have happened. And to that extent, if in fact it did happen, again, those individuals whom these allegations are being brought against are no longer with me. I don't know what else more I can do other than to garner as much information as I possibly can to see that yeah. if, in fact, some of this was going on, <clears throat> that it doesn't happen again. You know, uh, we're always going to have wrestling. The question is, how threatened now is this empire with the accusations of steroid abuse and now a gay sexual harassment? Because if it isn't, if you don't convince, obviously this is, uh, I'm not suggesting I'm telling you something you already don't know. Don't know. If you don't fix this, you're not going to be able to give these tickets away. No question about it. And we'll be back in a moment. People magazine is uh, out with a page, uh, a, a piece on the Incredible Hulk, Hulk Hogan. Y you, you, are you acknowledging here that uh, Billy, that you, uh, you actually introduced young wrestlers to steroids? I'm acknowledging that Hulk Hogan came to me in 1977 in Tampa, Florida, and 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 inquired about steroids, right? Because he wanted to be a wrestler. You and know, I, I want to tell you him, what. I, I don't, want, gave him I don't want to send him to jail for that. No, no, I'm not. 1977. No, no, that's how you did it. I and we didn't gave know. him. All right. I freely but gave you, him you, you look back on it and you say, holy cow, that was no, wrong. But the point is, I freely gave the man that information in 1977. But the fact of the matter is, now he has gone on the Arsenio Hall show and lied to a national, a national audience that he has never taken steroids except for three occasions, and those three occasions being for therapeutic use only for a torn bicep. I've injected the man myself probably a half a dozen times. David Schultz, a close friend of mine, has injected yeah. him over 200 times, and Hulk Hogan himself has told me personally superstar i knew nothing about steroids when i began but why and, and for the first year i took a shot every day of my life every day for the for the first yeah. year until i learned how to cycle steroids yeah. but my point is my point is, Billy, Phil, you're you can't being a very big income here. But you with this can't. That's right. What but you can't think? lie to children in this country about drugs. That's child abuse. When you get on television and you say you have never taken steroids and you've done it for the whole ten years, and and and, and, and when you and when you've taken steroids for the decade of the eighties, and when you've taken cocaine and other drugs, and you and you, and you lie about this to children, that is child yeah, molestation gotcha. of their minds. Gotcha. You can't lie to kids about John drugs. Arezzi, yeah. you want to say, sir. Didn't Vince say uh, on in published reports that you were devastated when Hulk Hogan made those statements on Arsenio? I was it devastated. That was the word used to me. It was. Well, all right. <laughs> it was in the. I don't, recall, I don't recall using the word devastated. Uh, 
Hulk Hogan, I think, told the truth. The question is, as far as the media is concerned, is whether or not he told I don't the whole told, truth. I don't believe the, I don't the believe truth. And, and let me just say this. three Firstly, times is not the truth. Okay, first of all, let me say this. That as you readily would recognize, Superstar, as you started this whole steroid phenomenon in undoubtedly professional wrestling, it seems to me that we're losing sight of the fact that steroids were legal at the time. I mean, it was not, just as not, legal. Not, not, not in not some legal. states they were, and they were not legal in Florida. Okay, federal, well, fine. But I, you federal, know, they were legal in Florida. But the issue Florida is, you they're not legal now. They lie. Okay. The children right. are not legal. All right. All right. Right. Well, that's why okay. we instituted yeah. our steroid If you ask me, year. and nobody has, <laughs> I don't want. I don't want to string up a guy who took these uh, this uh, football wrestling that. whatever in the 70s or 80s before the sunshine started to come down on us about the terrible side effects of this drug. We need side your, your point about the, your accusation that he lied is a different hello. Hi, to the three men on the end yes. who lost their jobs, yeah. how many people in the World Wrestling Federation today are performing sexual favors to keep their jobs? Well, today, uh, I would have to say I don't know because the two main culprits, I guess, have resigned and stepped down. When, when you were when you were working there, percentage-wise? Uh, well, percentage-wise, I can't really I can't really say like you know thirty percent, fifty percent. I know of 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 at least one person right. that was there from beginning to end. If you are not hi, are you there, caller? Briefly, you had to say. Yes, I have a question for Mr. McMahon concerning all those executives resigning. Yes. Don't you find it strange that all those accused have resigned? Why did you accept their resignations? And wasn't indeed Mel Phillips suspended? Yes, you have one individual who's suspended who was not uh, technically an employee, although he worked with us uh, almost every day. And you have uh, two executives who have resigned and we've accepted their resignation. Yes. You talk about child abuse, but if you saw or had knowledge of a child a young person being the whistle right away. Yeah, I because you're yeah. 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 Um, Okay, I've got to understand I like to you got to understand something. You have to understand the wrestling. By coming forward right now, I'm done, man. I'll never wrestle ever, ever again under any circumstances. I am done. Yeah, yeah, but when you have okay. a family to support and you're talking about your livelihood, you throwing it out the window. You can yourself that that man said he saw a child being abused. If that's true, no, said, he is said, a scumbag. If you had knowledge you of it, you should have done something about it. I said when you lie to children, children, when you lie to children that, is, that is child uh -huh. abuse. That's, that was my point. Yeah, I didn't, uh, Bruno, you wanted to say. I wanted to tell that young lady. Place they were reported. We told you the parking lot no, incident when it was reported to them. They said, "Well, what they do in their own time." They, they didn't care. Don't Over you understand here. that? Over they here. didn't yeah. care. Um, first of all, I think that it's a shame that seven of the people on the six of the people on the panel, with the exception of Mr. Meltzer, are sitting there accusing Mr. McMahon, who so far has done nothing wrong. Mr. Oh, I know you've been in jail, Mr. San Martino. Your son is fired under very suspicious circumstances. How can you <laughs> sit here no and accuse Mr. McMahon at a personal vendettas? Yes. None of that has any You don't know what you're talking about, Sonny. When you grow up, maybe you'll understand a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just wondering why people go into wrestling in the first place. Money. I mean, they know it's not a pure art form. Even just looking at wrestling, you can see that it's tacky and it looks... People love this. But you can tell it's There's easy just by looking at it. A lot of people love professional a very serious wrestling. Issue here. A lot I got a break. Are you there, wrestling wrestling caller? Yeah. I can't talk to you. Well, <laughs> hang on. Maybe I'll get you in. We'll be back in a moment. For a transcript of today's program, send $3 check or money order to Donahue Transcripts, 1535 Grand Street, Denver, Colorado, 80203, or call 303-831-9000. From sexual equality to sexual harassment, are women suffering a backlash for the success of the feminist movement? Nick Donahue. Yeah, I, I just like to ask one question to the wrestlers that have been in the business for a long time. Let's go. Um, how many are there percentage homosexuals in uh, oh, wrestling? Nobody business? knows nobody that. Cares. How that many homosexuals in your neighborhood? <laughs> Report back to us on that. What did you want to say? Yes, yes. It's a. That's Isn't wrestling issue. fixed that's anyway? That's not a real that's issue to any of this. No, that's a, you know, that's, a, that's a creative decision. Who wins? You know, the snake loses, the good guy wins. This is about crime. This is about breaking the law. Yeah, what is it? <laughs> Tell them about it. Uh, you said over here that uh, if you blow the whistle on sexual harassment that your career is over. You're blackboard. I just want to know, is your career worth the price of these 10 and 13-year-old boys getting Absolutely harassed? Not. <laughs> The service is provided and promotional fees paid by the following.